with lots of Republican candidates preparing to jump into the race in the coming days and weeks, I wanted to take a moment to give them a little unsolicited advice. It's definitely unsolicited about how and when they might take on Donald Trump. Let me do explain myself here. So this week we learned the former president could face potential charges in early August about his attempts to interfere in the 2020 election in Georgia. That would be a very big deal. Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis told her staff to work remotely and asked judges not to schedule trials in the first half of August, which is signaling a narrow timetable for her charging decisions in this case. She wants staff to stay home. She wants judges to stay home. So it also seems like there's something pretty big coming. Of course, we don't know yet what, if any charges this Georgia case will bring or how they'll play. But we do know this case is centered around efforts to overturn the results of a Democratic election. It's all about democracy. And the district attorney is signaling that if charges come, they're probably coming in August. Do you know what else is happening in August? The first Republican presidential primary debate. Yes, I mean, Trump may skip the debate. We probably won't know until we are much, much closer. But regardless, the debate will be a huge opportunity for you candidates out there. In a crowded field, they offer perhaps your best opportunity to have a moment that people remember, that helps you raise money, that makes your candidacy stand out. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, I want to stay away from Trump's legal troubles. After all, when he was indicted in the hush money case, 68 percent of GOP voters stood by him and deemed the investigations politically motivated, according to an NBC News poll. Most of you White House hopefuls chose not to attack him. I don't agree with it. But I kind of get it. But trust me, this one is different because this one is about our democracy. This one is also on tape. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. So what are we going to do here, folks? I only need 11,000 votes, fellas. I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. I mean, it's still hard to believe that was a phone call between a president and a secretary of state and not a scene from the Godfather movie. So if you're one of the Republican candidates preparing to be on the debate stage in August, here's a pretty simple attack line to get your creative juices flowing. And I'm sure you can do better. Votes are earned, not found. I'm going to earn your vote. That one's on me, free of charge. And if you're still feeling unsure about whether or not to raise this when you get on that stage, consider this. Your ultimate goal is to end up in the Oval Office, right? And in 2022, election denial was unpopular in general elections. Almost every single candidate in battleground states who denied or questioned the results of the 2020 elections lost. It turns out standing up for democracy isn't just the right thing to do. It's also popular. It's not just Democrats saying this or proving this. Just take Georgia. In Georgia, Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger first refuted Trump's election fraud claims to Trump on the phone, then to voters across the state, and he was reelected over an election denier. Republican Governor Brian Kemp refused to overturn Biden's win in Georgia. He was reelected as well over Trump's hand-picked choice to replace him. And he's very popular in Georgia today. I'm sure all of you Republican candidates out there noticed that. And just this week in Kentucky, Kentucky, very red Kentucky, Republican Secretary of State Michael Adams took down two challengers who campaigned on claims of voter fraud. So Republican candidates out there, you have your strategy. We have given you some research. There's more to where that comes from. I even gave you a sample attack line to get all those creative wheels turning. You have just over two months until the debate. Prepare accordingly. And no pressure. It's just your political future, of course, whether or not you're in the Oval Office, and our democracy on the line.